Listening to understand someone is one of the greatest compliments that you could ever give somebody. Today I want to talk about two kinds of wisdom. Two kinds of wisdom. A lot of people think they are unique and free thinkers. That, you know, they, they're their own man, they're their own woman. But today, so many people are simply seduced by popular culture. And popular culture stops us, prevents us from thinking for ourselves. Edward T. Hall, a professor of anthropology, says, Man has put himself in his own zoo. He has so simplified his life and stereotyped his responses that he may as well be in a cage. The natural act of thinking is completely modified by culture. We only literally use a small fraction of our mental capabilities, this ability to think, and the rest, culture just tells us what to do in most situations. Cultural anthropology, which is sometimes called social anthropology, is the study of human behavior as influenced by other people and by the culture. In fact, they know by studying our babies and children as they grow up that they begin to be totally encultured. And so it's impossible to avoid the influence of the culture, but we can become aware of it and we can begin to resist its seduction, its ability to stop us from thinking and from being all that we can. God has designed you and gifted you so amazingly that within you are more gifts, more abilities than you could ever fulfill in your lifetime. A hundred years of going full bore and you won't touch because you're made with an eternal spirit. You are so stunning, so amazing. But now, culture has already decided, uh, you know, what you should do, what you should look like, what you shouldn't reach for, what you should reach for, how do you look at something and not look at something, and it literally caps us, and it just makes us all beige, vanilla. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, it says, don't let the world around you squeeze you into its mold, its thinking, its culture, till you are just marinated and your thinking is a very shallow, limited thing that just solves a few problems that exist as you walk your life out in the culture that you are living in. I want to help you with a few thoughts. And one of the first we're going to start with is this. People do not like being wrong. People hate being wrong. And so they will hang on to their opinion even when they know it's wrong. Because their identity can't handle being wrong. And if you and I are going to become wise, the way the Bible talks about wisdom, then we have to become so secure in our identity that it has nothing to do with being right or wrong on any given topic. But your identity is secure because God values you and God loves you. I've watched people, and, and I have to do this myself. You know, if I think I know something and somebody wants to disagree with me, you have to make a decision to want to listen. The Bible says a fool rages, loses it when you disagree. I've watched two empty minds argue, you know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And they don't listen to the other person because while they're talking, they're forming their own argument. And your brain is not amazing enough to really listen to them and learn if you're going to begin to build this lawyer-like argument in your head from the data they're just sending at you. And it's this useless argument. But if you listen, really listen, one of the keys to wisdom is you like being rebuked. Now that word rebuke there doesn't mean people just cussing you out. It literally means somebody with a different opinion. The Bible says a wise man, he likes it. 
So when someone walks up to you and you begin a conversation and you all believe everything the same, everything's the same, you don't disagree at all, what a boring conversation. <laughs> good job, good job, I heard all that before, but yeah, 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 now let me repeat to you what you already believe. Like, really? We used to love disagreement. We used to love, what do you think? When someone walks up to you and they've got a different opinion, lean forward and go, really, okay, tell me why. Because even if you know what you believe about that, why wouldn't you care about knowing what they believe? Are you so important you don't care what anybody else believes? If you value someone and you love someone, say you don't even know them, if you just value people, and you say, talk to me, why would you think that? Oh my, do you grow in your ability to lead? Because you can't lead, if you don't, all you can lead is people like you. And you're a small percentage of the world. So to listen to people and how they think and how they process and why they think and why they process and what makes them upset with you or happy with you and just to listen. Listening to understand someone is one of the greatest compliments that you could ever give somebody. Listen married couples, one of the sexiest things you can do is focus on your spouse and lean forward and want to understand. Now you can disagree with every analogy and point they make about the relationship or you, but you'd be naive to not want to know how they think. What a stupid thing to try to make a marriage work and not even know how that person thinks. Knowledge doesn't come down to right or wrong. It's like the four men standing around an elephant one in the front, one in the back, and two on the sides. And they're both, all four, trying to describe to each other what an elephant is. There's only two that are going to agree, and that's the two on the side. The guy at the back and the guy at the front, they're not even going to have the same description, but all are actually correct in this instant. You can climb a mountain from the north side, the east side, the south side, the west side. You could tunnel up from below. You come down by helicopter. There's so many ways to look at that mountain and describe it. But we are, we are literally um, down to this one little myopic way you look at things. And if, if we do not just get excited about expanding, I'm going to become so secure in who I am that I want to know what you think. Yeah, talk to me. And if that person gets passionate, cool, who cares? What's it to you? Wisdom is so crucial. Only people who are secure in their identity will want to know what others believe. Now, one of the problems now that we have in growing in wisdom is self-centeredness. To be I actually cannot differentiate the difference between pride and selfishness. That they are so enwrapped together that if you are self-centered, self-absorbed, self-grandizing, self-promoting, uh, you know, it's just self-motivated, just put whatever words you want there as a suffix, then pride will be your problem. Doesn't matter how much you act or look, they are so together. And so it is impossible for you to grow and develop wisdom because this self-centered, self-focused means you're right, you have to be right, your identity is built around being right. If anybody thinks you're wrong, uh, and sometimes parents can raise kids in such a way that if they do something wrong, it's, it, it's just too brutal. Or if they say something wrong, it's too, they can't have an opinion. And they think that the way they raised them when they were three is the way they're going to raise them when they're 12. Listen, a child is designed to become more independent every year of their life. That's not disobedience. That's independent. There's a big difference. And some parents want to just control. Oh my, you've got a mess that's, that, that's just waiting to happen. And so parents who are Christians, they'll just try to manipulate and enforce. And you can't do that. You, can, you, you literally have to manage them in whatever area they can't manage. But as they grow, this mismanaged person becomes to manage and manage your life more and more. You've got to teach them wisdom. You've got to admire their thinking and engage them in their thinking and listen to how they think. Oh, so many kids will never go home when they grow up. You know why? Because they're not, they are not prized, celebrated. The way they think, the way they look at things is not something that their parents want to know. It's just, this is the 
the way it is according to their religion. And I hate religion because religion doesn't allow the unique autonomy of every individual person to know Jesus, to know the word, and to rise up and be incredible for him. If we can have a church like that, your kids will never leave. They'll want to come back. They'll want to go to your house because everyone knows I'm unique. I'm made significant. And there's ways that I think. And even if they're wrong, if I am admired for my ability to at least share these ideas where we can get a robust conversation going, man, that's an alive family. James chapter 3 verses 14 to 18 says, and by all means, don't brag about being wise and good. If you are bitter and jealous and selfish, that is the worst sort of lie. For jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and inspired by the devil. For wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there will be disorder and every other kind of evil. It's interesting. People will often ask me, why do you think this is happening? And your mind can't reason out why some leader is doing something or why some situation is going. You go, what in the world's happening? If you can't put a finger on it, you can't figure out why, and it's evil and it's bad, then there's a really good chance that behind it is the kingdom of darkness. Because Jesus said that there's a kingdom of darkness and that the enemy is here to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I'm coming that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. So when you have a selfish person, and this is an amazing study in leadership. Go back through history and find out how many leaders for their own selfish ambition, they, they, their, their insecure little identities need everybody bowing and, and doing whatever they say and what happens. I mean, history is littered with deaths and horrible things as millions of people die and entire countries disappear. Literally, if you go back far enough, you'll actually find entire people groups that have just disappeared. And so there is a wisdom, okay, that is just a natural wisdom. And if you start becoming self-centered, self-focused, um, you will open up a door to the enemy. Because selfishness is the very beginning of evil. Isn't that interesting? Now then it says... Verse 17, but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, full of quiet gentleness. Then it is peace loving and courteous. It allows discussion and it's willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and good deeds. It is wholehearted and straightforward and sincere. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a heart harvest of goodness. Those two verses is how you'll judge people and leaders as to is there a wisdom here? Is the wisdom that they have a wisdom from above? Because people can begin to talk and the, the wisdom that the world has is very shallow and complex. But people, because they can't understand it, think, ooh, that guy's deep. Now, he doesn't understand what he just said. Now, the Word of God is incredibly deep deep and simple. Now the word simple doesn't at all mean what we take that to mean. It literally means that the wisdom of God, you'll just absorb it. You'll be able to follow it. And you can, true wisdom takes the complex and begins to simplify it so you can understand, so that you can use it.